Hey! Yes. So I have the AMC A list, and what that is is a subscription service where for nineteen ninety five a month, I get free three free movie tickets a week, and from December twenty eighteen to March twenty twenty, I saw one hundred and seventy seven showings in sixty six weeks, which I think is pretty freaking impressive. Then the pandemic screwed out all of that up, but now movies are back. And so it's time once again for another installment of Steve Stubbs of the Week! Da -da 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 -da. That was nice. That was nice. I like that. So this installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 15 week, my 15th week back in theaters. And in that time, I have seen 27 movies in theaters. I saw only one movie in theaters this week because my wife is currently in New York, but uh, we'll get to that in Act 2 of the podcast. But uh, I still have two movies to talk about. This past week, I saw the following movie in theaters. Venom 2, The First Assignment. Okay, I have been hearing mixed reviews on this one. Hold on, I'm not done. Go ahead. Venom 2, Judgment Day. Yeah. Hold on, I'm not done. Venom 2, The Two Towers. Yeah. Uh, that that one has Smeagol in it. Uh, but also, someone sent me a cam bootleg of a movie, and uh, number one, I had forgotten that uh, cam bootlegs were a thing. Yeah. Because um, movie theaters were closed for so long, there were no people that were doing shaky filming of the movie. Uh, but this this uh, cam bootleg was in quite good condition. It's uh, the Oscar bait movie The Eyes of Tammy Faye. So we will be discussing this new movie, which is uh, in a limited run right now in theaters. Yeah. I think literally it's it's award bait material. Uh, but yes. So first, let's discuss the movie. So those are the two movies this week. First, let's discuss the movie that I did not see in theaters, and that is The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Right uh, off the bat, that title is hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first off, it's directed by Michael Showalter. Yeah. He was a member of The State. He also <coughs> was a member of Stella. And he was the star of Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah. Really, uh, I didn't know he was directing films, but apparently he directed The Eyes of Tammy Faye. He, he, Jessica Chastain's performance as Tammy Faye Baker is amazing. She knocks it out of the park. She is wonderful in this. She deserves all the acting awards. And I'm sure when uh, award season comes along that she will win a number of awards. Uh, that being said, there, there's nothing new to this film. The problem that I have with this movie is that this is a movie based on a documentary they did about Tammy Faye Baker when she was still alive, and the documentary is also called The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Yeah. So, like, you didn't even change the name of the movie. So there are two movies called The Eyes of Tammy Faye, one that's acted and one that's a documentary. But the documentary was made by some hardcore Tammy Faye fanboys. Really? Yeah. Who did appear, because Tammy Faye, because of her makeup and the way she presented herself and her singing, Tammy Faye got a big gay following. And also, while everyone else, all the other, like, Christians were uh, attacking gays and homosexuals and liberals and the evils of the left and Hollywood... She was embracing gay people and uh, embracing people with AIDS. And so she has a huge gay following. And so uh, they made the documentary okay, okay, about it. Okay, 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 okay. Time. All right? Yes. Some 
people you don't want to be embraced by. Yeah. You know, and Tammy Faye is one of them. I don't care if... It, it, uh, unless she has given millions and millions and millions of dollars to gay causes, I don't fucking care. Her embrace is worthless and meaningless. It's like being embraced by Booger Man. Yeah. Oh my god, we've only been doing this podcast for 19 minutes? God damn. What? I just saw the timer on Twitch, and it says we've been doing this for 19 minutes. It feels like it's been so much longer. I am very high. Oh. I'm extremely high right now. That's why I'm yeah. glad I wrote everything down. That brings me comfort. Okay, so Tammy, they made a documentary about Tammy Faye, by, by, and it was made by these Tammy Faye fanboys because she has a huge gay following, a huge cult following, a, a kitschy following, a cult celebrity following. She's basically like a religious Gary Coleman, you know, or David Hasselhoff, but of the religious sect. Yes. And she has a big drag following because the way that she always looked. And so this is a movie based on a documentary that is overly favorable towards Tammy Faye Baker. Yeah. So this movie feels very one-sided and the movie comes off as oh, Tammy Faye Baker, an amazing woman and a hero who was led astray by all of these horrible people, including her own husband. And it's like, I kind of feel like this is, it's like when you see Jesus no, Christ. it's total bullshit. You were it's standing the, there the whole fucking time. You were yeah. just as guilty. You know, yeah. Tammy Faye or Melania Trump, take your fucking pick. They're not innocent. It's, Ava it's Braun like, was not innocent. So, so this is so this is the story of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker from the point of view of Tammy Faye Baker, and it just doesn't seem like. I don't know if I can trust this movie. It, it, it the way that it feels is a religious sort of Lolita. You know, because the guy narrating it, you know, is is spending the entire movie being an unreliable narrator trying to explain to you that what he did with an underage little girl was totally fine. Yeah. So, like, you can't fully believe the series of events that you're seeing. It's like watching Jesus Christ Superstar, and G it it's... The Bible from the point of view to, of Judas. And Judas is there going, hey, Jesus, why are you making me do this to you? I don't want to do this. Please stop. I'm innocent. You know? Well, it actually reminds me of the movie Kiss of the Spider Woman. Have you ever seen Kiss uh, of the Spider Woman? Yes. Yeah. I was very upset that Jessica Drew wasn't in it at all. <laughs> Uh, William Hurt and Raul Julia are political prisoners as well. Close enough, because I want to say it quick. And to pass the time, William Hurt is telling Raul Julia about this movie that he had seen that he absolutely loved. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful and romantic and all that. And they go through different scenes of him telling them about this movie until Raul Julia is all of a sudden like, wait a second. This is a Nazi propaganda movie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And and William Hurt is all like, oh, I, I, I don't bother with the politics or whatever. It's just so beautiful and romantic. That's what this reminds me of. Like, like they're going to completely blow off the kind of monster Tammy Faye Baker was. Yeah. Yeah. Because they like her makeup. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So 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 and the whole she movie. didn't out and out show that she hates them. Yeah. This so the whole movie feels sort of uneven and biased, but 
it's worth seeing it alone just for Jessica Chastain's performance. It's absolutely amazing. She does a wonderful job in the film. Regardless of how biased the movie seems, uh, the acting is, is really great. And uh, I didn't think he looked like him, but uh, Jim Baker is portrayed by Andrew Garfield, everyone's uh, least favorite Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, next to the director of Lancer. Yeah. I think people remember him, but uh, he does a really good job too. Uh, the acting is great. The movie just feels a bit forced. And while you were talking about Kiss of the Spider Woman, John Hurt, that'd be a great wrestler name. Yeah. William Hurt? I'm not Hurt? sure if that's his name because like, there are a lot of them. I, I, yeah. There are John Hurts and, and there, are a lot of, there are a lot of hurting actors in Hollywood and I can't keep track of them all. Yeah. John, so, are, as far as I'm concerned, they are all John Hurt. Yeah. Yeah, we are group. And finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is Venom 2, The Winter Soldier. Okay. Hold on. Venom 2, The New Batch. This time there's a talking gremlin. <laughs> Venom 2, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got some more. Uh, Venom 2, The Wrath of Khan. Venom 2, The Golden Army. Venom 2, To Ven, To Om. And my favorite one, Venom 2, Ghost Protocol. Yes. I think that's like the fourth or fifth one, but I just, I just liked that one. Well, one thing that oh, I oh, learned... Oh, 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 you, you also forgot... Venom 2, Venom Saves Christmas. Ooh, that's a nice one. The day Venom Saved Christmas. Crap, dang it, that sucks! Okay. Uh, so one thing that I learned this week with uh, a lot of people talking about Venom, um, everyone who I know who has seen Venom and the majority of people on Twitter that I've seen talking about Venom has said the exact same thing. <laughs> that no one remembers the first film. Okay. Everyone has said the same thing. I'm really excited to see uh, Venom 2. I saw the first one. Don't know what it was about, but can't wait to see the new one. Yeah. Like, I heard that like 30 <coughs> times these past, like, two weeks. And that's weird. I remember the first Venom. I thought it was just okay. But the relationship dynamic between Eddie Brock and the Venom symbiote is is just great. Like an old married couple. And the sequel, Venom 2, uh, Get Venomier, is uh, they really double down on that relationship dynamic. Yeah. Uh, there's a great scene where, where Venom finally leaves Eddie Brock and um, goes in goes to this party and it's a costume party and so it's just the venom symbiote just being all big and tall and everyone at the party is like oh my goodness that's an amazing costume we love it it's like a rave and it might be a gay rave because uh it, venom feels so happy and embraced there that he he goes up on stage and grabs the microphone and starts talking about like i never needed eddie he held me down. He held me back. He put me in a closet, and I won't be in the closet anymore. And everyone's cheering, and it's like, oh, shit. This is literally a married couple relationship between Eddie and Venom. And yeah. it, it, that's the, that is such a good... They, they do that so well that the rest of the movie I didn't give a shit about. To the relationship dynamic between Eddie and Venom, the literal relationship dynamic between those two is so fucking good that like the rest yeah. of it could have the rest of it could have just been shit. It was just it was it was fun. Yeah, it was really, really dumb cool. fun. There was there was only one thing I didn't like about the movie. Uh, Cletus Cassidy is a serial killer played by Woody Harrelson. Let me walk that by you again. 
Woody Harrelson is playing a serial killer. Again! Yeah. And it really gave me some bad fucking vibes, because, like, I don't know if Woody Harrelson is that great of an actor. He's just doing Mickey again. Yeah. This is just Mickey and Mallory Knox without Mallory, and now it's in a superhero movie. And it gave me some real creepy uh, flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I did not... Just the way that he talks, the way he presents himself, and eventually he breaks out of jail, and what does he do? He finds, like, a red Porsche, and he dresses up, and he's listening to rock music, driving down the highway with his girl. I love you, baby. I'm going to fucking make out with you while we're driving. And it's like, shit, I have seen this before. Yeah. It's fucking weird to see... Uh, Venom 2 takes so much from natural born killers and uh, I'd hate to say this but I uh, it, it, like I remember liking natural born killers when it came out but now like if you say I'm a big natural born killers fan I'm also going to assume you're a big fan of Jared Leto's Joker <laughs> so, okay. if you say you're a natural born killers <coughs> fan, either you're a real big like horror movie buff and like you own a copy of a Serbian film somewhere, or you own a lot of shirts with Punisher logos on them. I I, I like it in a very proto Tarantino way. Yeah. You know. But I also haven't seen it in a really long time, so like I have, obviously I, I don't yeah. love it. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it this uh, this decade. I don't think I've seen it in the last ten years. Yeah, uh, the soundtrack was amazing. A bit too heavy on the samples of dialogue from the film, if I recall. Yeah. But but the soundtrack was really really good. But Venom you know, too. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, like I kind of forgive that. The way I forgive so many people in bad movie groups on Facebook who are like, "Hey guys, anybody ever hear of Buckaroo Banzai?" <laughs> you know, like okay, they're new. They're probably really young. You know. Let him, let him go. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't heard anyone talk about Birdemic yet, and it's like, okay, yes, yes, yeah. we, yes, we have seen that. Can we please move on? Yes. What are your thoughts on Tommy Wiseau? Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yep. But Venom. The problem you, that I then you get you, then you get some of the people on the other side, like oh lately I've really been into the into the movies of Sudanese director Makaya Mabubu. Yeah. Like okay. <laughs> yeah. All no, right. none of us have seen that. <laughs> yeah. Okay then. But the the problem that I have with Venom Two apart from the natural born killers flashbacks is the fact that the the mid credits the mid credit sequence the end credit sequence it, the end credit sequence is such a big deal that it's all anyone wants to talk about really yeah it's it's a really big deal and it ties in with everything and it's such a big... Wolverine was, Wolverine was sucking Mephisto's cock. <laughs> Basically, yeah. It, the, the end credit sequence is such a big deal that people don't want to talk about just the movie. And, and the movie is good. It, it blew me away. Finally, at the end, when v- v- Venom and Carnage are fighting, and they're fighting in, like, an abandoned church, like, very John Wooian. Uh, you know, you know, uh, that's Ric Flair's favorite director. Yeah. John. Woo! Oh, God. 
So I just came up with that. I'm really proud of that. So when I was seeing Venom and Carnage fight, I reverted back to like a 16-year-old in the 90s. Yeah. And it just blew my mind that like, if 14-year-old me was told that I would live long enough to see Venom and Carnage fight in a big budget live action Hollywood movie, I wouldn't have fucking believed you. Yeah. You know? The fact that, like, it, it, and I really started thinking about it. The fact that, like, when you are in your 40s, Steve, going to, like, 12 year old me, if you, when you are in your 40s, Steve, everyone will know who Spider Ham is. Yes. I mean, it's like, fucking really? It's like, yes, everyone will know who the Winter Soldier is. He'll get his own movie and then his own TV show where he's fixing a lobster boat. Yes. Fucking what? Loki will get his own TV show where he's D.B. Cooper. And he's Doctor Whoing all over the fucking place, and yes. everyone will love it. It, it. it really is just a fascinating time. The fact that, like, Venom got his own movie and got a sequel and will appear in at least one more film, like, it's, it, it's worth it to see this movie. I, I, like, I was watching Venom. And, like, 12-year-old me just appeared in the theater, and it's like, holy fucking shit, we're watching a Venom versus Carnage fight. This is a big-ass deal. And you know who's in the film? Fucking Tommy from Snatch. Yeah. He was also, he was also in one of those biopics, either Bohemian Rhapsody or fucking uh, the Elton John one. I don't remember which one, but one of those. Oh, he was also, I think, in two of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Anyway, it, 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 I, I was shocked. No one told me that Tommy from Snatch was in Venom 2, Electric Boogaloo. But, uh, yeah, no, it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. Yeah. The, you, everyone has to see it for the end credits alone. It's a big-ass deal, the end credits. I've, I, I've heard criticism of it, but, like, again, Venom's just not... not he, he is after my time. So yeah. I do not relate to Venom as well. I mean, I thought yeah. the first movie was interesting. I don't really remember what the fuck it was about either. Yeah, everybody. Everybody says that. That's fascinating. Yeah. Everyone says the exact same thing about Venom. The first Venom movie, and it's weird. I remember Jenny Slate was in it, and that was fucking weird. Like, like what is... What is don't be suspicious doing in this movie? But but uh, it, it was it was a good film. It was a decent film. Venom two. They doubled down on the relationship aspect between Venom and Eddie Brock, and it's so amazing and adorable and cute that that alone is worth going to see the movie. That in the end credit sequence. If you're a big fan of natural born killers, here's a sequel. Yeah. So, but I uh, do watch Comic Explained, so I know that. You really can't swing a dead cat without hitting a symbiote somewhere anymore. Yeah. Yeah. There are like millions of them. Yeah. A lot. Uh so so that's that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. I'm so hot. So that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. I'm not sure if there's going to be a Steve Stubbs this week, because usually I go see movies on Monday and Thursday. But my wife is going to be gone for a while. Yeah. There in New York in Schenectady? <coughs> I think I nailed Schenectady. It. Very good. Yes. Okay. So I don't know when I'm going to be seeing movies again, but we'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. So uh, join us for whenever the next installment is of Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that.